Hey there, I'm Cyberchroma, and today I will be showing you the basics of Unity, and work towards building a simple character that we can move around. This tutorial assumes you've at least seen Unity before, and have a general understanding of the user interface. Ready? Let's get started! After opening up Unity in a new project, we will start by creating a cube for our player. To create the cube we will use as our player, go over to the Hierarchy window and select the Create button. In the drop-down, go to 3D Object Cube. Now we can see our new cube over in the scene view. Using these arrows, we can move our cube around as we please. Alternatively, with our cube selected, we can go over to the Inspector window and, under Transform, change its Position, Rotation, and scale. We can undo these changes with Ctrl Z. To get a better view of our cube, we can use the scroll wheel, middle mouse button, and right mouse button to navigate around. Now, let's create the ground for our player to sit on. Again, this will be a cube. In fact, we can duplicate our player cube and position it to be the ground. We can do this by selecting our cube and pressing Ctrl and D. We can now see we have two cubes in the hierarchy, Cube and Cube 1. Let's move our new cube down to become the floor. Selecting the new cube and going over to the transform, we can change the position to 0, negative 0.5, 0 to line it up with the grid. Then we can make it a lot bigger by changing the scale to 20. 1, and 20. Let's move our player up as well, to 0, 0 0.5, 0, so it rests on the ground. So we can tell them apart, let's rename these game objects. By slowly double-clicking cube, we can rename it to player. We can do the same to cube 1 to rename it to ground. Now we have our player and ground, but with them both being white, our game looks kind of bland. So let's add some color, shall we? Down in the project window, we have our assets folder, which contains all of the files for our game. Currently, we only have one folder, called scenes. We will make a new folder to store our colors, called materials. We can create a new folder by selecting create, folder. Let's name this materials. Going into our new folder, we can now make our first material in the same way, or we can right-click and go to Create Material. Let's name this Player. Selecting our material, we can go over to the inspector and select this white color box. This will bring up a color wheel where we can drag around or type in specific values to get the color we want, which we can see down here. Let's go with a yellow color. Two other values we can play around with are these metallic and smoothness sliders. You can see the effects changing these have on our material over here. Let's change metallic to 0.5 and smoothness to 0.5. Now let's add the material to our player. This can be done simply by dragging our material onto the player. Now, let's make another material for our ground. We can create a new material, or duplicate our player material by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D. We can rename this material to Ground. We can add this material to our ground by dragging in the same way. Now, let's give the ground a different color. I will go for a black color and set both the metallic and smoothness sliders to 0. Going back out of our Materials folder, let's take a look at the Scenes folder. In this folder, we only have one scene, called Sample Scene. This represents the level we are currently working in. Let's rename this to something like Main. With our scene set up, let's start moving our player. There are many different ways to go about moving a player. Some ways include using Unity's built-in physics engine or animation systems, but we will just be looking at the simplest way to get a character to move, with some basic programming. In the project window, we will create a new folder to store our code. 
right click and select Create Folder, and let's name this one Scripts. Double clicking this, let's create our first code file, called a script, by right clicking and selecting Create C Sharp Script. This will control our player's movement, so let's call it Player Move. Make sure the name does not contain any spaces or this can cause problems. Now, let's double click this script to open it up in Visual Studios. When our script opens up, we can see there's a lot of stuff here by default. Usually, we only have to worry about these two areas, Start and Update. Everything you write in Start will run when the game first starts. Everything in Update will run every frame of the game. For moving our player, we do not need the start function, so we will delete it. Now, we will start moving our player in update. To move our player, we want to change its position every frame. To access the player's position, we can type transform.position. We can change the value of this position by typing equals and then whatever we are changing it to. You might remember that the position had three different values for x, y, and z. Together, these three values are called a vector. Since there are three of them, this is called a vector3. To create a new vector3 to change the three values, we can type new vector3 bracket and then the three numbers separated by commas. For instance, if we wanted to move the cube to position 2, 1, 4, we can type that and then the other end of the bracket, and finally a semicolon to show it is the end of the line. Let's save this and test it back in Unity. After waiting a few seconds for the script to compile, we must first add it to our player for it to work. First selecting our cube, we can add this script by dragging it into the inspector. Now we can see our player script on our player. We can also see a few other things on our cube, such as Box Collider and Mesh Renderer. These are essentially scripts that have already been written by Unity, and on an object, they are called components. We can now test our game by hitting this play button at the top. The screen tints, and we can now see our cube has moved. If we select our cube, we can see it has position 2, 1, 4, as we intended. We don't really have a good view though, so let's move our game camera around. We first will hit the play button again to go out of play mode and select the main camera. Let's move it to position 0, 12, negative 4, and then set the rotation to 70, 0, 0. That's much better. If we go back to our code, let's now get our player to move continuously. First, we'll change our numbers to 1, 0, 0, so it only moves on one axis for now. Then, we want the position to add every frame, so we can change this to our new transform.position equals our old transform.position plus our new vector. A shorthand for writing this can be to change this to transform.position plus equals our new vector. Let's save and go back to Unity. If we hit play, we can see that our player shoots off to the right. This is way too fast, so let's fix that. One thing we haven't taken into account is that our update function, which runs every frame, may run differently on different computers. Usually, this will run at 30 frames per second. If people are running our game at a different frame rate, this could lead to the player moving at different speeds, which is not what we want. We can fix this by, at the end of our line, adding times time duck delta time. This number is the time between the last frame and the current frame, and will make the speed the same at different frame rates. Next, let's add a way for us to control the speed inside of Unity. Above update, we can do this by creating a variable for our speed. Let's add public, float, which means a decimal, then whatever we are calling it. Let's call it speed, and then the semicolon. Then in update, we can multiply this by speed. If we save and go back to Unity and to our player, we can now see our speed number in the inspector. Hitting play, we first see nothing happen. This is because our speed is currently set to zero. If we increase our speed to say five, we can see our cube start moving off the screen. If we change this number, 
our cube will start to move faster or slower. If we change the speed to a negative number, it starts moving back the other way. If we go out of play mode, we can see the number reset to 0. Let's change this to 10. Now that our player can move, let's get input from the keyboard to move the player only when we want to. First, a shorter form of our 1, 0, 0 vector can be to change it to vector3.right. As well, we can use vector3.left, up, down, forward, and back for the other directions. To test if the user presses a certain key, we can type if bracket, then input.getKey bracket, and then key code dot, and then the key that we want to test for. We will use the WASD keys to move the cube, so to move right, we want to test if they press the D key. Then we close our brackets and add curly brackets before and after our position line. This will automatically indent the lines inside the if statement. Next, we want to move the player to the left if they hit the A key, so we can copy and paste this code, and then change D to A, and to move left instead of right, we can add a negative sign before our speed. So that we can't try and move left and right at the same time, we can add the word else right before the second if. This says that if this first statement is true, run this code. If this is not true, but this second statement is true, run this code. Now, let's add a way to move forward and backwards as well. Again, let's copy and paste this code, and this time we will change A to W, D to S, then to move forwards instead of right, we can change vector3.right to vector3.forward. Lastly, let's swap these negative signs. Let's save and test this now over in Unity. Hitting play, we can now see that by pressing the buttons we've set, we are now able to move up, down, left, and right. And now we have a movable player, but you can see that if we move off the edge, we don't fall, and instead just float. So let's fix that. Let's go to our player, then go to Add Component, and type Rigid Body, and select that. A rigid body allows physics to act on an object. This can include gravity, friction, and bouncing off of other objects. We can see that use gravity is checked, but there is one other option we do want to change. Going down to constraints, we want to check freeze rotation on every axis, as we do not want our cube to rotate at all. Now that we are using physics, there is one change we now want to make to our code. We will want to change the name of update to fixed update. This will make our cube work better with physics. Now we have a functional player that we can control. Already there is a lot you can do with this. I challenge you to make more primitive game objects as obstacles for the player to have to move around to get to the end of a level. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have ideas for tutorials you want to see, suggest them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you around.